up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little bit since we made a video, like a week, because I was making a video every other day there for a minute. I don't know if you noticed, but we were hitting it hard. We had to stop doing that because we got hit hard with a lot of work and we were freaking busy. We're not gonna be able to paint this brick for another month probably, which is really unfortunate because I was really looking forward to getting this house painted, but that's just gonna have to wait because that's how it is, you know? You gotta go out and work on other people's houses first so you can make the money to work on your own. And speaking of working on other people's houses, that's kind of what I'm in the middle of right now. Now I have this customer, she called me a couple weeks ago, wanted to see if I could build this crown. I said yes, not really knowing I could do it and you'll see why, because it's not a typical crown, it's actually pretty custom and I have a really cool idea for it and I'm gonna show you when we actually go and install it, but this is a big part of it right here. I had to build a special jig to make flutes. Now you say, Flutes, that's easy. They have jigs on the market that make flutes. You know, how hard could it be? You can make your own jig with just a straight edge on the side of a board, you know, big whoop, right? Actually, it is a big whoop. So check this out. This is a one by six Windsor One tongue and groove board. This is not what I'm gonna use to build my crown, but this is a scrap that I have equivalent to one by six, so this is what I'm using for this example. So long story short, right? Flutes are usually run with the length of the board. Like when you think of fluted casing, you usually see it going up and down vertically. I don't think I've ever seen flutes running horizontally to my, to my memory right now. So, you know, that's easy, right? Just take a jig, line it up with the edge of the board, use the edge of the board as a guide, build some kind of guide, buy a jig, there's some on the market. But how do you make flutes when they go like this, when the board is horizontal, but the flutes still need to run vertically? Now, flutes, if you remember, they usually end prematurely before the board ends. So for example, if I was gonna flute this board right here, I wouldn't flute all the way through it. I would actually stop it like an inch and a half for whatever reveal I want before that ends. And that detail right there is exactly what we need to do with our flutes, but the board is gonna be horizontally like this. You can't set up a jig on the edge of this board because you're gonna be limited by the time you get out here in the middle. So I looked everywhere for something like this, like something to buy, something to just a jig set up on the internet. I looked on YouTube and I cannot find a way to make flutes going up and down vertically like this until now. Check this out. I was able to do it and I accomplished it using this little jig that I made. So let's check it out. In case you guys didn't know, that was my daughter Abigail doing the camera lady work. And how was it, Abby? It was heavy. It was heavy and she signed up for it. So don't try to say child labor laws or anything like that. You wanted to do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so check it out. This is my little fluting jig that allows me to accomplish this. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but these are done with a mortising bit, not a bowl cutting bit like I want to do these flutes with. So I'm going to get a bowl cutting bit and it's going to look a lot better. So check it out. It's a really basic build. I built this with track tubes and just a couple scrap pieces of wood. So got this track tube right here. This one is semi-permanent because that's my miter saw fence. I haven't talked about this yet, but Glenn over at track tubes, who's actually the inventor of track tubes, had this idea to you know, have a knob with a threaded insert into the table and this little bracket right here, he 3D prints all this stuff. And you can move that fence right there and dial it right in with your miter saw fence, which my miter saw is not in position right now because I was figuring this jig out. But all that to say, that knob and one other one, just like it on the other end, are holding this jig in place. So that track tube right there and this track tube right here are connected via this piece of mahogany and these little hold down clamps. These are also track tube hold down clamps and those are spaced just wide enough where this one by six will slide in here nice and smooth, but also where it won't move from left to right. So this thing's not gonna, you know, rack back and forth this way because that would not be good when it comes to spacing on the flutes. So really, that's the whole idea of the jig right here. You slide your material in, you make your cut with the plunge router, and you plunge down with this, and then you hit your stops, which I'll show you in a minute, and then you slide your material a little bit more, do the same thing, a little bit more, same thing, same thing, and you just repeat it. A little bit of a painstaking process, but that's the only way I can think of how to accomplish cuts like this. You're just gonna have to do a repetitive process. So looking over here on this top view of the jig, and from here you can really see just how basic this jig is. It's just a single board. I've got this mortise cut into it. It's the perfect size. 
of the base plate of this router so it's not going to you know go back and forth from left to right and this grease right here that you see is actually not grease it's actually this Odie's oil right here I'm using that as a lubricant because it was a little stiff at first like I was having some friction some resistance there so once I put that Odie's oil in there it just made it super smooth I actually made this just a hair too big and I tried it and it was not working so I put a little shim in there like a sixteenth of an inch shim and once I did that you know it dialed it perfectly in and then we're at this point right here so that allows that to slide these little pieces of walnut right here are my stops that make it where I don't have to think about where I'm gonna stop they just bump into this with the router and you know once you do that you're gonna have the perfect spacing that's how all these are perfectly stopped in the same position right there. I also made a desk port for this. You can see right here, I just cut a two and a half inch hole right there. I had this little blast gate right here. You would probably never <laughs> use this enough to use a blast gate. But I had this and I just pounded it in there with the mallet and then attached this with a little thumb screw clamp. And that actually helped a lot because before that there was a ton of dust flying out everywhere and it was just not good. So that is essentially the jig, guys. Pretty basic. I got two hold downs over here as well. Again, those are perfectly spaced. So this thing right here will slide super smooth through here. And then obviously right here, there's a slot cut out right there. So the bit can obviously go through and I just cut that using this bit itself, this mortising bit which is not a good bit for flutes, but it's all I got right now. So I am going to get a bowl cutting bit, which will be much better. And one other note about this jig, this board right here actually has to stay in here to elevate the actual workpiece. because as you can see, if I push down on this plunge router all the way, it doesn't reach this board. So I have to have a board under my actual workpiece to elevate it and actually reach it with the bit. So these flutes right here are spaced exactly an inch and a half on center. And that was actually the most painstaking part about this because I have no way to gauge like quickly where that's gonna be. My idea is to stretch a tape measure across this whole board and mark every inch and a half or two inches, whatever reveal I decide on. I'll actually try two inches right now on camera just to see a difference. That's gonna be the hard part because the way I got these an inch and a half on center was literally referencing this edge of this track tube and measuring every single one with my tape measure, which is not gonna be efficient. So when John gets here and we're actually making these boards, we'll come up with something where we can have one guy on that end with a reference line and a reference line on the board and he shifts it over the other guy plunges lifts up the plunge router shifts it over and that's gonna have to be what happens here so that's all i can think of if you guys can think of something better let me know in the comments i could do something like matthias one where he has that wood gear every time he turns it like four turns it's like a half inch or something crazy stuff like that that would be awesome but I'm probably not gonna do that. But if you have any other ideas, let me know. And another thing, this mortising bit, using it like this, is probably not the best. You can see I got some blowout right there. So I think, again, with that bowl cutting bit, it's gonna be a lot better. And these are gonna look freaking awesome. And I'm glad I made this, because I like this look and I wanna incorporate it into something. Like imagine a top rail of a wainscot with that flute right there, that flute detail. Maybe even just a smaller bit. This is a, a big bit right here. It would just be, man, that would be cool. So I'm just gonna drop my board in here, slide it over to where I can get it under the router. And then back to what I was saying earlier, this is my workpiece, and this is the edge of the track tube that I was using to reference my <laughs> increments for spacing. So I'll just tap this back to where it's flush, like that. Then I can plunge down and then move the board over. And yes, that's why the tape measures here. So I can manually measure every single one of these. So I'm gonna hit my dust collection and uh, we'll try two inch spacing on this one. So I'll go ahead and do a couple of these in real time and then I'll speed up the footage.
Check it out, guys. We got our two fluted samples. That is pretty sweet. Got my inch and a half down here and my two inches up top right here. So I'm leaning more towards the two inch for what I want to do, and I'm going to show you guys what I want to do. This is my idea. Got this little off cut sample right here. So this is WOHC001. Fancy term for Windsor One header cap. This right here will go like that, and then that'll be down right there. Look at that. <laughs> that looks sweet. So you got this little molding up top, and then you're really drawing attention with these flutes like this. So I'll make a couple more spacings for this customer. So we got inch and a half, two inch, and I'll make them with the actual bolt bit so she can see it. And then maybe two and a half, just to see, just to give her an option, because that'll be less cutting for me as well, <laughs> over less time. Actually, let's just give her a four inch spacing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's the, that's the deal right there. Look at that. That is gonna look sweet. And this right here is very deceiving because these are some wide, wide flutes. They're not gonna be that wide. Right, Josh? So here's an up close with the molding. So it'll look like that. And then it'll give you a little side profile image too. <laughs> That's gonna look really awesome. Can't wait. So there you have it guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about this little jig right here, especially any advice on how I can get those increments measured rather than doing every single increment individually, manually, whatever you want to call it. That would be much appreciated because I've got some ideas, but great minds think alike. So do so do bad ones is what I always tell my wife. And also we got the Dewaki tees back in stock. They're back forever. As long as Success Print Shop keeps making them, I'll keep sending you guys that way. There's a link in the description if you want to grab yourself one. I think I have sizes medium through 2X. I might even have small actually now that I think about it. So yeah, they're there. You can check them out. Link in the description and appreciate it guys. As always, let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.